everyone. My name is Damian Williams, and I'm the U.S. Attorney here in the Southern District of New York. Today, I'm announcing the unsealing of a three-count indictment, oh, Sunday, what is that? charging Sean Combs with racketeering conspiracy, sex trafficking, interstate transportation for prostitution. The indictment alleges that between at least 2008 and the present, Combs abused, threatened, and coerced victims to fulfill his sexual desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. As alleged in the indictment, to carry out this conduct, Sean Combs led and participated in a racketeering conspiracy that used the business empire he controlled to carry out criminal activity, including sex trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and the obstruction of justice. Oh my God. Let me say a little bit more about the charges. The indictment alleges that Combs abused and exploited women and other people for- Chad, Ch but what, what, what are people saying that he was a fed before though? Didn't, um, Chad, didn't Kanye say this guy was a fed before or whatever? For years and in a variety of ways. As alleged, Combs used force. So so, 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 so you're telling me that the guy was a fed and he was, he was, he was in, he was on the inside with, with some of the feds, whatever, and they knew nothing about anything he was doing until now? Threats of force and coercion to cause victims to engage in extended sexual performances with male commercial sex workers, some of whom he transported or caused to be transported over state lines. Combs allegedly planned and controlled the sex performances, which he called freak-offs and he often electronically recorded them. XQCL. The freak-off sometimes lasted days at a time, days. involved multiple commercial sex workers, and often involved a variety of narcotics, such as ketamine, ecstasy, and GHB. No cocaine? Which Combs distributed to the victims to keep them obedient and compliant. As alleged, when Combs didn't get his way, he was violent, and he subjected victims to physical, emotional, and verbal abuse so that they would participate in the freak-offs. Jesus. And that Combs hit, kicked, threw objects at, and dragged victims, at times by their hair. On one occasion in March of 2016, that conduct was captured on video and later reported in the media. Specifically, Combs kicked, dragged, and threw a vase at a victim in a Los Angeles no, hotel. No, not to see uh, did you not say GHB? Is that what he said? Yes, this is, it's, it's, a, it's a date R word drug, yes. When the victim was attempting to flee. As alleged, not always used often as a date R word drug, but to the victims, more commonly on which took days or weeks to heal. XQCL, XQCL, XQCL. In addition to the violence, the indictment alleges that Combs threatened and coerced victims to get them to participate in the freak offs. He used the embarrassing and sensitive recordings he made of the freak offs as collateral against the victims. Dude, that's fucking insane. And the indictment alleges that he maintained control over the victims in several ways, including by giving them drugs, by giving and threatening to take away financial support or housing, by promising them career opportunities, by monitoring their whereabouts, and even by dictating their physical appearance. Dude, this is fucking because insane. Because of all of this, the indictment alleges that the victims did not believe they could refuse combs without risking their security or facing more abuse. Dude, dude, this is the type of thing you hear in the movies, and in the movie, even in the movie, it sounds even l less real, like. The indictment also alleges other acts of violence undertaken by Combs and others, including violence against witnesses to his abuse, kidnapping, and arson. The indictment alleges that on more than one occasion, Combs carried or brandished firearms to intimidate and threaten victims and witnesses. Now, Combs did not do this all on his own. As I mentioned, Combs has been charged with RICO conspiracy. He used his business and employees of that business and other close associates to get his way. Those individuals allegedly included high-ranking supervisors in the business, personal assistants, security staff, Chat, and health Chat, staff. how do you fucking sleep at night? Uh, like, how? how? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, being a bad person, but if, you, if you're a bad person enough, I mean, you don't give a fuck about none of that shit, right? Because if you're, if, you're, if you're bad enough, you, you don't even know, think it's bad, so you just do it. But what I'm saying is that how do you sleep at night, like, knowing that a bazillion parts around you are all, like, like on edge? Like, you're keeping people quiet, 
you're, you're paying you're paying people off you're doing all these things whatever and bro it was like a like an impossible to fucking like maintain thing it's just insane why well, i mean bro years of of, of, of keeping a thing afloat like that dude full staff the indictment alleges that those individuals facilitated the freak offs they booked the hotel rooms and stocked them with the supplies including drugs baby oil personal Uber chat chat you ever you ever done something when you were, when you were young something even little whatever but you you were overthinking about the consequences or whatever and then when you were at home every time there's phone rang you're like oh my god everything's going back to the door you're like holy shit then. right dude i feel like this is like that but like times one million and extra linens wait wait, wait wait personal assistants security staff and household staff the indictment alleges that those individuals facilitated the freak offs they booked the hotel rooms and stocked them with the supplies including drugs baby oil personal lubricant extra linens and lighting when the hotel rooms got lighting damaged, they helped clean it up they arranged for victims and commercial sex workers to travel for the freak offs and they delivered large quantities of cash to Combs to pay for the commercial sex workers. The indictment also alleges that they helped Combs cover up his crimes. During the March 2016 incident at the LA hotel that I mentioned earlier, a member of the hotel security staff intervened and Combs attempted to bribe the staff member with a stack of cash to make sure that what happened was kept quiet. Well, then, I mean, which, which, and as the indictment alleges, worked, in late then, right? 2023, after public allegations were made about Combs' crimes, he and others pressured witnesses and victims to stay silent, including by making phone calls to witnesses and victims and giving them a false narrative of what they had experienced. And as alleged, Combs Ch used other... Chat, I'm just... You guys, you guys, every time something like this, or something not like this, but, but there's a wide-scale thing that was hidden, hidden for a long time, I, I realized that... This insane. It's, there's a lot of people, a lot of parties. It's a very crazy amount of individuals who have tangible probably evidence and with tangible things, and nothing comes out. Not everything remains intact. Because up until la last year or whatever, we didn't even know about Diddy doing anything bad. I'm pretty sure, or there was hints here and there, but nobody was really pointing at it. But that is, you guys say money, Ch guys, guys. This is things that. I truly believe it. even money can't buy it. Having that many people in line or ever, that is insane. It's like nothing slipped, that's crazy. There's to help conceal his abuse by monitoring and preventing victims from leaving a location in order to hide their injuries or by locating and con- There's money, that, 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 is, that is mostly fear. Like, it's mostly fear. Attacking a victim who had attempted to flee. As part of this investigation, in March of this year, special agents from HSI executed search warrants at Combs' residences in Miami and Los Angeles. They also executed a warrant for Combs' electronic devices. During those searches, agents seized evidence of the crimes charged in this indictment. They seized firearms and ammunition, including three defaced AR-15s and a large capacity drum magazine. Wait, what? in the Centronic devices. During those searches, agents seized evidence of the crimes charged in this indictment. They seized firearms and ammunition, including three defaced AR-15s and the large capacity... Chad, just, just that is like almost fucking life, is that not? Chad, isn't that, isn't that right there just life? ...drum magazine. They also seized evidence of the... Three free defaced offs, ARs? ...electronic devices that contain images and How videos... How is that legal? ...of the freak-offs with multiple victims. And they seize cases and cases of the kinds of personal lubricant and baby oil that Combs' staff allegedly used to stock hotel rooms for the freak offs. Wait, what? And baby. And they seize cases and cases of the kinds of personal lubricant and baby oil that Combs' staff allegedly used to stock hotel rooms for the freak offs. More than 1,000 bottles altogether. Here are some of the items that we recovered during the searches. Oh, dude, come on, man. Really, dude? As you can see here, this is a drum magazine, large capacity, 
and it contains, I believe, 59 rounds. I mentioned as well that we recovered three AR-15s. Yeah, lower receivers or whatever. This is a close-up shot of one of the AR-15s, and you can see right here the serial number has been thoroughly defaced. Another picture of more ammunition and parts of two AR-15s right there. Chat, guys, guys, so what I said when I said defaced, chat, is that it's not defaced as in modified, it's, it's serials are scratched, that's like really fucking bad. Now I want to be clear about two things. First, this office is determined to investigate and prosecute anyone who engages in sex trafficking, no matter how powerful or wealthy or famous you may be. No one should doubt our commitment on that. A year ago, Sean Combs stood in Times Square and was handed a key to New York City. Well, well, I mean, dude, at, at the same time, this may appear as like a, almost, like, almost like, a, like a win, like, oh, dude, like, like this is a win for justice. Brother, that is a very lengthy amount of time to be committing crimes and doing shit, and a lot of fucking victims and people suffering for a, a very long duration of time. That's not a win at all. Like, this is Today, this is terrible. he's been indicted and will face justice in the Southern District of New York. Second, we are not done. This investigation is ongoing, and I encourage anyone with information about this case to come forward and to do it quickly. Anyone with information can call 1-877-4-HSI-TIP. I want to express my deep appreciation for the victims and witnesses who have used their voices and helped bring this criminal conduct to light. We would not be here without them. I also want to thank the dedicated case agents on the HSI Trafficking in Person Squad in New York. They have been with us since day one and have worked tirelessly on this investigation. They will continue to be invaluable partners to us. I also want to thank the incredible agents and analysts from SCNY who have also provided tremendous assistance on this case. I'm deeply grateful for their continued work. And finally, I want to thank the outstanding career prosecutors from SCNY who are handling this case. Meredith Foster, Emily Johnson, Chrissy Slavic, Madison Smizer, and Mitzi Steiner, and their supervisors, Jamie Backleiter and Jacqueline Kelly. They are members of the Civil Rights Unit in our criminal division. We created the Civil Rights Unit when I became U.S. Attorney. I'm deeply proud of their work on this and so many other cases. I'll not take some questions. Aaron Katursky. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, it, I, I think it's always innocent and proven guilty, right? But as things go on, these things can take fucking years on years, right? And this is, uh, what is it, like federal, uh, whatever, prosecution, whatever. Prosecution uh, having like a, what, like a massive fucking win rate. Um, they're very high rank. This is like, so we're talking about like 90 whatever percent federal indictment, 98% win rates. Like, like, when these guys miss, it's a miss click. ABC. Thanks, Nick. Damien, thanks. The indictment describes Rare. aggressive, so you can make open, your own conclusions before the hedonistic that's fine, abuse I think, yeah. that you say was recurrent and widely known. Why did it take law enforcement so long to intervene? How many women were victimized by Sean Combs, and how many others were involved? Look, our investigation is ongoing. Um, we are committed to bringing justice to everyone who's been victimized by the defendant. Um, I can't tell you why it took so long. I think the, the, the better focus is on the fact that we are here today. Um, uh, and come we on, are committed bro. to making sure that justice is done. I also think a ballpark amount isn't... Come on, bro. Next question. A ballpark is fine. Julia Ainsley, NBC. Thank you for doing this. Double you digits, we are not triple digits. Done, and that Combs did not do this alone. Do you foresee that there could be other charges related to this case? I'm not taking anything off the table. Janet Fisher, Newsday. Yeah. What's the difference between the uh, sex trafficking and uh, promoting travel for the uh, purpose of prostitution? Well, there are different crimes with different elements. I don't um, think we should get into the, the nitty gritty of the legal discussion right now, but um, the, what the, the absolute the sex trafficking, dog shit believe, question. They're all serious offenses, but the sex trafficking. Chat, um, this uh, is something I fucking hate about interviewers. They ask a question, they should, they should only ask questions that only him and their people can answer. Don't, don't ask questions for chat GPT or a fucking local lawyer, you fucking loser. What are you doing, dumb dumb? Conduct um, carries some significant penalties, and, uh, and, and we are gratified that we were able to bring that charge. Is one more coercive than the other? 
I'm not going to be able to get into that, but but you can look it up. And and, and yes, sex trafficking, especially when it involves coercion or force, um, is is a very serious crime, and it carries significant penalties. Good afternoon, Darla Miles, ABC7 New York. Thank you for this press conference oh, God. and for the details. Two questions. Um, in context of this indictment and the information that was presented to the grand jury, are you able to clarify the number of victims? It's mentioned plural in the indictment. Oh, you just asked that, you man. Specify the number of victims just for this particular indictment. And secondly, can you provide details about the alleged arson? Um, unfortunately, I'm not able to provide either. Um, the number of victims, um, you are correct. They, we are intentional in saying multiple. Um, uh, the details of the arson incident um, are limited to what we have in the indictment and also the detention letter that we filed, uh, um, which contains more details than the indictment does at various points. Um, but we don't have anything more beyond that. Next question. Lynn Tran, CNN. Oh. Um, are any of his accomplices or uh, associates under investigation? And additionally, could he face any more charges? So the investigation is ongoing. That means both as to him and to anyone else who we believe uh, committed the crime uh, with him. Next question. Julia Papa. Chat. Guys, didn't he say he was, uh, uh, he was getting for like racketeering or whatever? Isn't racketeering um, de facto includes other people or whatever? A, R a, Rico, a RICO case or whatever includes other people and other associates by default. So the question is already answered by the fucking charge themselves. Hi, good morning from 1010 Winds. Uh, any indication that some of the women or victims here were imprisoned in his residences? And did he have locations where he kept them? And did they were not allowed to leave? And uh, also, uh, he's indicted here, although there were searches and raids in L.A., Miami. Why in New York? Well, um, I'm, I'm biased. I'm the U.S. attorney in the Southern District of New York. I think that we um, have an outstanding track record of bringing some of the most impactful, sprawling, complex, difficult um, sex trafficking, uh, human trafficking, labor trafficking, you name it. Um, the Southern District of New York can do it, and so we're very proud of that. And so the scope and complexity of this investigation isn't something that we ran from. Question. It's something that we embrace, and we will continue to do that. Um, as to your question about whether he imprisoned anyone, um, all I can say is that, you know, I mentioned this March 2016 incident where something was caught on video where a victim was attempting to flee um, and there was violence that was associated with it. Was that at the residence or a hotel? Um, that was at a hotel. Matthew Lee, Inner City Press. Sure. Uh, thanks a lot. Does your office intend to, to seek remand or are you reaching a bail package? And if you're willing, can you, how would you contrast this with the R. Kelly case in, in EDNY in terms of the elements? Thanks. So um, we will be seeking detention. We have filed a letter um, laying out our reasoning uh, for seeking pretrial detention. Um, I'm not going to be able to expand beyond what's in the letter, but it contains um, all of the reasoning and it contains uh, the law as well. Um, there is a presumption of detention in a case like this, and we think that's warranted. Yeah, no shit. John Anise, New York Daily News. Bro. Thank you. Joe, yo, isn't, that, isn't that like a, like a flight risk or whatever? Brother, this guy has so much money, so much, so much power. He could literally fucking teleport some other fucking country in uh, any time. Um, I was hoping to get some more detail about the uh, searches of his residence, um, the, the uh, guns, the, the cases of lubricant, and the videos. Uh, Where were they? Uh, yo. The, the uh, guns. I was hoping to get some more detail about the uh, searches of his residence, um, the, the uh, guns, the, the cases of lubricant, and the videos. Where were they found amongst his residence? Were they all... Scattered around the houses in one Where place. I kind that? of wanted to just get a better picture of um, of how that stuff was found. Well, look, I, I think that some of the details um, uh, that you're seeking are in the detention. What? Level. So, for instance, um, some of the, the the AR-15s. Two of the three defaced AR-15s were found in his bedroom closet in Miami, um, broken down into parts, along with magazines. Um, with ammunition uh, loaded in them, so um, some of the some of that detail is in the detention letter. Beyond that, I'm not going to be able to get into uh, where other items were were stored. Ben Kochman, Post. Chat. Uh, yeah, these reporters are hey, so bad. I can't uh, doing this. Um, your office um, was the office that uh, had been prosecuting uh, Jeffrey Epstein uh, before he uh, died uh, in custody. Ooh, um, I, I have not read your detention memo yet. It's the first thing I'm going to do uh, after this ends. But does it does the does the memo address or is your office concerned with 
uh, with Combs' safety in custody given, um, given what happened with Ep Epstein? So we are concerned with anyone's safety whenever they are um, detained prior to trial. It's part of our obligations to keep people um, uh, safe as well. Um, it's part of the criminal justice system. So, um, Just what I think correct. I mean, well, dude, dude, Jack, the, Jack, the Epstein thing was a fucking disaster. You could at least acknowledge that that should be the goal and not what's currently going on because that should have never happened. But I do not draw any sort of connection between like um, what? Jeffrey Epstein's suicide and um, what may or may not happen um, to any other defendant while they are um, detained pretrial. And of course, the decision whether to um, detain the defendant will be up to a judge. Our position is that pretrial detention is warranted under the law and based on the facts of this case. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Are, are some of the prosecutors on this case uh, some of the same prosecutors that had been uh, handling that or, or that worked on the Maxwell case? So um, I'm not going to get into the, 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 the staffing. I will say that this team. The reason why I think it's a good question is that if something happens afterwards, right, they can look back and say, yo, what the fuck is that, man? Like, it's, 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 a, it's a bad precedent to say, oh, we're doing this and no, not do it. This group of, 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 of AUSAs, this incredible um, group has been working on this case around the clock. Um, and they've had their hands full. Next question. Gus Rosendale, uh, NBC News. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, Combs attorney said uh, that his client has been cooperative with investigators. He said that this morning. I was wondering if you would have a reaction to that. Um, uh, let me just say this. I think that um, generally uh, and in, with increasing frequency, the, the word cooperative or cooperating has taken on tremendous elasticity and it no longer really bears any relation to oh, what that's a fair statement. Um, uh, the word means when we use it um, in a very specific context. So um, uh, responding to lawful process um, and the like um, does not qualify as cooperation when we use that term here. Mike Sisak, AP. Thanks. Good answer. To that end, uh, was there any discussion of Mr. Combs surrendering? I understand he was taken into custody at a hotel in Manhattan last night, and maybe that wasn't the plan. Can you elaborate on, on how that came about and why that was? I'm not going to be able to get into any sort of operational... Um, oh, yeah, they cooked him. How he was taken into custody. They, yeah, way. they cooked um, him. They cooked him raw on the stove. Appearing in court later today. Was there any discussion of him surrendering, given you know they claim he's cooperating? I'm not going to be able to get into law enforcement tactics um, or operations. What do you say? Well, um, I can't get into the charging decision. It, it is very meaningful to us that weapons uh, were possessed, um, as we allege in the indictment. Um, uh, you know, part of the reason why this conduct was so um, uh, pervasive and, um, and harmful was because victims and others didn't necessarily feel comfortable um, denying him his wishes, as we allege, um, because of the presence of, of, of firearms. Um, I should leave it there. Thanks. Last question, Jameson. Jameson. Jacob Shamsi and Business Insider. Thank you. Um, given that he's the sole defendant in this case and that you allege he's part of a conspiracy that involves members of his companies, do you anticipate a superseding indictment um, that uh, bring allegations against um, other members of his companies or other co-conspirators as well? Already asked. I, again, I can't take anything off the table. Anything is possible. Our investigation is they, very they active. All, they already on asked that. And man. I think a lot of you who cover this office know that when we say such things, um, that developments um, uh, are certainly foreseeable. That was, a, that was um, asked. But I cannot predict it's the same question. It's all right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. you can ask the same question in like a million different ways, but that is literally the exact same thing. These, these journalists are fucking absolute dog garbage. Okay. Um, 